My name is Chinmay Deshpande. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about a topic from numerical integration. Today we will discuss about a derivation of Simpson's one third rule. So let us consider we have i equal to integration x zero to x n f of x dx, whose integration is to be find it out, where x zero is the lower limit, x n is the upper limit. Here function y equal to f of x will be known or unknown. We will have a data, let's say x zero y zero, then x one y one up to x n y n for corresponding function. And the state size here h will be equal to x one minus x zero. All the data which is placed here, it will be equally spaced data. That is. Distance between each value of a x is the same. So let us draw a graph here. Let's say this will be your x-axis. This will be your y-axis. Now, if you see, whatever this curve we have drawn, this curve is nothing but an actual curve. So it is shown by arrow here. This will be actual curve. Let's say we will take one point which is denoted as a a. Here x will be equal to x zero at this point and y will be equal to y zero at this point. Let us consider another point that is B with x1 and y1. So this will be x1. If you see, this will be your y1. So let me write it as this is y0. This will be your y1. And here you will get this point C with the points as x2, comma y2. So here, if you see, we will get a second degree polynomial curve here. That the curve is approximated by the parabola. So from above diagram, it is clear that. Under approximate curve is a form is parabola. Now what we did we we just divided this curve like this. So if you see, let me take it another color so that it will be easy for you to identify. So let's see here if you see whatever green color curve I am showing, this is nothing but your approximated as a parabola because we are taking this as a one point, this as another point, this will be third point. So you will get a shape like this. And this will be your parabola. You see, this will be the area under the curve. Suppose this is your x-axis, and this will be your y-axis. Now, that parabola is the secondary equation. That is, we will have a function with a limit as x zero to x two f of x dx. Now we know that what is Newton's fourth quadrature formula. Already we have derived it. So treat this as the equation number 1.9. Integration x0 to xn f of x dx equal to n h into bracket y0 plus n by 2 delta y0 plus 2 n square minus 3 n by 12 del square y0 plus n cube minus 4 n square plus 4 n upon 24 del cube of y0. Now as we will get approximated curve as a parabola, which is a second degree curve. So we will put here n equal to two in this equation. That is Newton's fourth quadrature equation. So as n equal to two, we will have a data points x zero, x one, x two, and y zero, y one, y two. Now how to find it out? Delta y zero, it will be y one minus y zero. How to find it out? Delta y one, it will be y two minus y one. Already we have gone through in a interpolation. And how to find it out? Delta square y zero, it will be delta y one minus delta y zero. Now, from the table, it is observed that delta cube of y zero, delta raised to four y zero, and whatever upper terms, it will be zero. So here, what to do in this equation, one point nine, you have to put. So I will write it here. You have to put here n equal to two. So what you will get here, you will get it as here two. This see carefully. N by two. So here will be two by two. Okay. And if you put it here two, two into bracket. Two square minus three into two upon twelve. Two square is four, so it will be eight minus six divided by twelve, which will be equal to two by twelve, or you can write it as a one by six. So we will get this term. We will get this equation. But what is your delta y zero? Already from above table we know delta y zero will be equal to y one minus y zero. So we substitute it here. What is del square y zero? It is y2 minus 2y1 plus y0. We have taken this from this table. So if you solve it, now what we will do? I will I will uh, 
take this 6 outside, so it will be what? 2 by 6 into h. So you have to multiply here by 6, so you will get 6y0. You have to multiply here by 6, so you will get 6y1 minus y0. And it, this will be y2 minus 2y1 plus y0. So if you uh, solve this, 2 by 6 will be h by 3, y0 plus 4y1 plus y2. Treat this as a equation number, next equation. Now here we have seen that we have limits from x0 to x2. But it may be from x2 to x4 also. So if we have x0 to x2, how we have written here, it will be y0, 4 into y1 and y2. So similarly, from x2 to x4, how we can write, if here is a x0, we have written here y0. So if here is a x2, we have written, we have to write here y2. Next will be y3, which will be multiplied by 4 and upper limit is y4. Upper limit is x4, but corresponding y value will be y4. So in general, we can write a formula for n number of a terms, which is indicated by this equation. But we know that, what is integration x0 to xn? It will be addition from x0 to x2 plus x2 to x4 plus x4 to x6 like that up to x of n minus 1, n minus 2 to xn. So if you substitute this equation 10, equation 11, equation 12 in this equation, then you will be able to get such kind of equation. So this will be your, this term integration x0 to x2 f of x. This will be, this will be your, uh, this term integration x2 to x4 f of x and this will be your, this term that is integration x of n minus 2 to xn. So finally, if you rewrite a formula, you will get a formula for Simpson's one third rule, which will be h by 3, y0 plus yn, that is sum of first and the last ordinate of a y plus 4 into here if you see, you will observe that there are odd terms. So we can write sum of all remaining odd ordinates of a y plus 2 into here you will observe that even terms y2, y4, y6 like that. So plus 2 into sum of all remaining even ordinates of a y. Now while using this formula, the given interval of an integration must be divided into even number of sub intervals. This is very important. Because here if you see, the area is divided into two sub-intervals at a time. Now how we can remember it? We can remember it h by 3 into bracket h, x. x is nothing but extreme ordinates that is y0 plus yn plus 4 into odd terms that is remaining odd ordinates of a y that is 4 into y1 plus y3 up to whatever it may be and plus 2 into E means even terms, that is sum of all remaining even ordinates of a y. So it will be 2 into y2 plus y4, whatever it may be the next step. Now, what is the what are the, what is the method with the help of which you can solve the problem of Simpson's one third? So write a given function, write the number of intervals if it is given, and if the data is given in the form of ordinate, then we will be able to find it out. N will be equal to ordinate minus one. If you know the value of n, then we will be able to find it out value of h, which is xn minus x0 divided by n. Sometimes in the problem h might be given, so in that case you will be able to find it out n, that is number of interval as xn minus x0 divided by h. h is the step size, n is the number of interval. So based on function, whatever it will, will be your function, y equal to f of x, you put there x equal to x0, you will get answer of y0. You put in a function x equal to x1, you will get answer y equal to y1. Likewise, you have to do up to xn and yn. Then, as y up to xn and yn, because lower limit starts from x0 and upper limit ends at a xn. After that, use Simpson's one-third formula for getting the answer. So, always the question might be asked in a theory examination, Derive the expression for Simpson's one-third rule used for a numerical integration. So in that case, you have to draw this graph also and whatever steps we discussed here. Thank you for watching this video.